Hello, you're watching Dansky, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to create a 3D ray trace design all in Adobe Illustrator, and we'll be animating this after in After Effects. This tutorial is also sponsored by NVIDIA and Asus. And for this video, I'm going to be using the Asus VivaBook Pro 16X, and here are the specs for this particular model. And these specs, together with the entry-level RTX 3050 Ti laptop GPU, are a perfect blend between price and performance. So the apps like Illustrator are super fast and responsive, which is great. The standout feature for me is definitely the stunning OLED display with a resolution of 3840 by 2160, also known as 4K. And the reproduction of color is both accurate and vibrant, with this display being able to produce much deeper blacks. It's also Pantone certified, which is perfect for professional creative work. So there's a quick overview of the VivaBook Pro 16X. There's a link below if you'd like to find out more information. But now, let's hop into Illustrator and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator. First, let's go to File, down to New, scroll down, and make sure the document color mode is set to RGB. The artboard size is set to 1000 by 1000 pixels. Let's give this a name and click Create. Next, I'm going to select the Type tool, click anywhere and type a word. My word is going to be Fearless, and you can hold Shift while scaling the text up so it doesn't distort out of shape. I'm also going to reduce the leading or line height so the words are closer together. And you can pick any font you like to follow along with this tutorial. But for me, I'm going to use my own custom font, Sparta Sans. And the main reason is all of the edges nicely line up. Now this font was created with the rectangle tool and the line tool, very simple. So you can go ahead and make this yourself. Or if you'd just like to follow along, you can download the fearless text layout in the video description. So with the text now selected, I'm going to select the fill and then go up to the swatches panel. And if you don't see any of these panels, they're all located under the window dropdown. So first off, let's make this a bit bigger. I'm then going to double click an orange, check the box global, check preview, and then adjust these sliders to create a similar orange to the accent color used on the VivaBook Pro itself. And I'm going to do the same with a light gray and then a much darker gray. And the reason I'm checking the global box is because if I update these swatches at any point, every instance of that swatch will be updated throughout the entire document. Okay, next using the rectangle tool, I'm going to draw a big box to use for the background. And you can see if I drag this to the corner, it doesn't automatically snap. If that's the case, just go to view, down to smart guides and switch these on. Now, when I try and resize this box to fit the artboard, you can see it snaps to the corners much more easily. And of course, I'll need to send this to the back as well, so it's behind everything else. And let's also give it a darker color so we can see our text. Lastly, I'm going to lock this so I don't move it by mistake. And I'm actually going to make the background a little bit darker as well. So as you'll see, I'll update the global swatch and the background changes. Once you're happy with your text, go up to Type and select Create Outlines. Next, let's right click and select Ungroup. Now we can select all of the letters individually. And if I select these bottom four letters, I can go to Object, down to Compound Path and select Make. Now Illustrator will treat these four individual shapes as a single object. And you can see I'm doing that for the top letters too. Now that's done, I'm going to select the word Less and make this orange. I'm actually going to tweak the color again as well and again, make the background a touch darker. And you can see I've changed the color of my text here. So let's just add that orange back in. And I'm also going to drag these swatches next to each other in the panel as well. All right, we're nearly ready to make this 3D. One thing I'm going to do first though is go up to Edit, down to Preferences, and select Performance. And I'm also going to check this box to make sure that that 3050 Ti is pushing GPU acceleration in Illustrator. I'd also recommend downloading the Studio drivers if you have an NVIDIA card, as these are more optimized for creative applications. Fun fact, this is also an NVIDIA Studio certified laptop. So all of the components in here, they've been specifically paired to give the user the best, most optimized experience. Exactly, Dan, well said. Now from the 3D and Materials panel, I'm going to select Extrude, and you can adjust the depth depending on how deep you would like your extrusion to be. There's plenty of other settings that you can play around with, one of which I'm going to turn on now is Bevel, and I'm going to change the type to Round, and you can see that if you drag the sliders, you can do this to the extreme, but I'm going to be doing it very subtly here, essentially to create a more realistic edge. And when we start playing around with lighting, you can get some really nice highlights that bounce off those edges. Now for the rotation, there's lots of different presets here. You can use the control points in the middle to move this around freely, or you can rotate along the X, Y, and Z axes from the bottom of the panel. 
Now for this design, I want my text to be isometric in style, and you can see there's a few different presets from the bottom of the list, but the one I want isn't actually there. So one way I can get this is by selecting isometric top, and then change the value of these bottom two boxes to negative values. And there we go, it's going up and to the right. Next, let's switch over to materials, and you can see there's plenty that come with Illustrator by default, and you can click each of these to get a preview. And you can also click this icon to download tons of community uploaded materials as well. Once downloaded, click the plus icon to add them and they will appear in the list. Now for this design, I'm actually going to use the default material and I get two properties for this, roughness and metallic. But to get a more realistic preview of the end result, I'm going to need to turn on ray tracing. Now the ray tracing feature in Illustrator is actually bound to the CPU, so that Ryzen 9 processor is definitely gonna come in handy. So all the way up in the top right corner, let's click the drop down and turn on ray tracing. I'll go with medium for now and then click render. You can also use this icon to quickly turn ray tracing off or on. And by adjusting the sliders now, I'm getting a much more realistic preview. And my goodness, doesn't that look better? So these are the settings that I'm using if you'd like to follow along. And next, it's time to navigate to lighting. Now there's some presets at the top that you can click to try out if you like. And you can also change the color of the light by clicking the color picker. Although I'm going to keep mine set to white. Many of these sliders are self-explanatory, intensity, rotation, height, softness, and these all relate to the light being cast. So my advice is just to play around with these, have fun, and find something that you're happy with. One slider that's particularly important is softness, and by making the light softer or diffused, you're going to get much softer shadows. Ambient light is another optional light source, and you can adjust the intensity of this or just disable it outright. Lastly, I'm going to turn on shadows and you can control how far your shadows are from your object. And you can see my shadows are being clipped by some invisible wall here. If this happens, just increase the value for the shadow bound slider. And if I zoom out and adjust these sliders, you'll get a better idea of how it works. And as you can see, we have the softness set to 0%. We have a very hard shadow. If I increase this, the shadow becomes much softer. Okay, let's turn off ray tracing for a moment. And because I've prepped in advance, I know all of the values for the final design. So if you'd like to follow along, just enter the values that you're seeing on screen now. And once that's all done, turn on ray tracing and see how it looks. Now we need to copy these settings to the fear text as well. So let's switch over to layers and expand these down. And if I select the fear layer, on the right, there's a circle that's selected. If you hover over this and hold Alt or Option, click and drag this onto the circle for the other layer, it will copy all of those appearance effects. And unfortunately, it's copied the color as well. But if I just reposition these, I can go and reapply that light gray to the word fear. There we go, lovely. Now I'm going to turn off ray tracing again and just take a moment to bring these closer together. And let's just zoom in as well to make sure that they both definitely line up. Now, if I drag over everything to select and I try and scale this up as before, it doesn't actually scale up that depth. So I'll need to select these individually, go to object and then manually increase the depth. And I think somewhere around 500 pixels should be sufficient and will give me that nice overall hexagonal shape for the final design. So any changes that you make manually, make sure you apply them to both words and I'm then going to reposition them in the center. Now that's all done, let's select the design and then turn on ray tracing to get a good look at the final design. And there we go, I'm very happy with that. So we're now done with Illustrator. The next step is optional and I'm going to briefly hop into Photoshop. Ooh, nice rhyme. Yes, that was a very nice rhyme, 10 points. Right, so I'm now in Photoshop and first I'm going to create a new document. I'm going to set the width and the height to 1000 pixels, same as we did before, and then click Create. And if I briefly jump back into Illustrator, I can now select one of the words, go up to edit, select copy, switch back into Photoshop, and then go to edit and paste. I'm going to paste this as a smart object. And if I set the width and height to 100%, it will be the same size here as it was in Illustrator. Let's repeat those steps for the other word too. And as you can see, I'll need to take a moment to reposition these and line them up again. And I'll also need to drag the fear layer underneath. In fact, let's just give these layers names while we're here. Okay, so that's looking good again. 
Next, I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer from the bottom of the layers panel. And here I can adjust the shadows, midtones, highlights, the blacks and the whites for a given layer. And if I click this icon here, it will clip these effects to the layer below. And these changes are very subtle, but depending on what you create in Illustrator, sometimes it's a lot of fun to bring your design into Photoshop and then use a different set of tools to finish it off. So you can see here I'm using the brush tool and I'm going to pick one of Photoshop's default soft brushes. And one feature that's unique to this laptop is the Asus dial pad that's hidden on the trackpad. Simply swipe down from the top right and you can now cycle through and make adjustments to different settings that are specific to certain applications. So you can see here that I can access some of the essential brush settings in Photoshop, things like brush size, opacity, hardness, smoothness and flow. And I can adjust these values on the fly using the dial pad itself. So now I've set my flow to around 50%, I can use the brush tool and brush into the text. And doing this on a layer mask means that these levels adjustments are only going to apply to the lower half of the text. And if I adjust these here, you can see that in action. And next I'm going to do something similar for the other piece of text. And instead I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. This is similar to levels, but a little bit more advanced. Okay, now that's done, I'm going to hide the fear layer and select the less layer and then select the object selection tool. I can click and drag over the text and hopefully it will select it. There we go, all good. Next, I'm going to go up to select, down to modify and select contract. Contract by one pixel and then add a layer mask from the bottom of the layers panel. The orange text is now masked and we've actually masked out the shadow as well, which is something that we're not going to need for the animation. Let's just pan around and check those edges are all good. And then it's time to hide this layer, show the other layer, and then repeat the same process. Now it's not really necessary, but if you are going to do more work in Photoshop, you can always select the paint bucket tool, select a fill color that matches what we did in Illustrator, and then add that as a background color. Next, I'm going to select each text layer individually, along with any associated adjustment layers, and then click the folder icon to group these together. I can then give the group a name, and then do the same for the other piece of text. And this is a nifty trick. I can select a group or a layer, right click and select Quick Export as PNG. This supports transparency and is a really good way to quickly get assets out of Photoshop as PNGs. And next, it's time to open up After Effects. So let's switch over to After Effects and you can see I have a new document. I'm going to double click in the project panel and import those two PNGs that I just exported. Next, I can create a new composition here or go up to Composition and select New Composition. I'm going to call mine Final. There's some presets you can choose from the dropdown and I'm going to set my width and height to 1000 and you can see here I needed to uncheck the lock aspect ratio box. Let's set the frame rate to 30 frames a second. You can go 60 if you'd like something smoother. And I'm going to set the duration to 10 seconds. Click OK. And now I can drag those two PNGs, fear and less, onto the timeline. And once again, I'm going to have to reposition these. So I'm just going to take a minute just to line these up again. Also, if your computer struggles during playback at any point, you can change the resolution from this drop down here. Next, I'm going to add a new solid layer. And I'm going to type BG for background and then pick a color, the same color that I've been using throughout this entire project. Of course, we need to make sure it's on the bottom. So let's drag that below. And now we're all set up to start masking our animation. So using the space bar and clicking, I can pan to the bottom part of the design and then select the pen tool. Now make sure when you do this, you don't have any layers currently selected. It's going to create a new shape. And this shape, I want to mask off the bottom of the design. So the two lines I've just made are the important ones. And if you get it wrong, you can undo that last step and try again. Everything around the outside doesn't matter, just so long as it covers the entire canvas. And I can now right click this layer and rename this mask. 
Now for the next step, we need to click the second icon along to get access to more options. And from the track mat dropdown on the less layer, I can experiment with alpha or alpha inverted. But alpha inverted doesn't look any different. Until I select the layer, press P on the keyboard and adjust the position, you can now see the mask working correctly. So let's duplicate the mask layer with Command or Control D, position this above the fear layer, and then repeat those same steps. Cool, so everything's set up correctly. Let's close those extra options down. Now grab the playhead and decide on a starting point. This could be the beginning of the timeline or say one second in. I can then click the stopwatch icon for position and it adds a keyframe. I can then scrub forward a few frames and then change the Y value under position to move the text down. And using the playhead, I can scrub back and forth just to check I've done that correctly. And you can also press spacebar to play. Now, in some instances, you can select keyframes, copy them, select a different point on the timeline, a different layer, and then you can paste those keyframes in. Unfortunately, as you can see, this isn't one of those times because pasting in those position keyframes undid everything I did at the beginning to lay them out correctly. But it's fine, we'll do this one manually. So we're just repeating those same steps that we did for the first layer. And again, zoom in nice and close just to check that they both line up when in the lowest position. Cool, looking good. Let's zoom back out and we can play this and see how it looks. Nice. Now for the next step, we need to reverse this. So I'm going to start with the fear layer, copy those keyframes, and then paste them a bit further on in the timeline. And all I need to do is now switch the position of these keyframes around, and that will reverse the animation. So let's do this for the other layer as well. And let's give it a play and see how it looks. Perfect. Now, one thing I'm going to do is adjust the easing because as you can see, it looks a bit stiff and rigid. So if I select all of the keyframes, I can right click one of them, go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease. And this is one of the quickest ways to create smoother looking transitions in After Effects. And as you can see, it looks much smoother now. Another little gem inside After Effects is turning on motion blur. So you can see me doing that for all of the layers and we could turn it off and on globally here. Now this will be more demanding on your hardware, but I think it looks really cool. So definitely worth it. And there's a few different ways you can extend the length of an animation in After Effects. A quick and easy way is just to select these keyframes and copy and paste them further down the timeline and even extend the length of your composition if you need to. So there we go, the animation's all looking good, it's finished and ready to be exported. So let's go up to File, down to Export, and you can select Add to Render Queue to do this directly in After Effects, but I'm going to add this to Adobe Media Encoder. So that being said, let's switch over to Adobe Media Encoder. So you can see the file is now listed and I can click on it to access more options. So from the format dropdown, you can see I've got H.264 selected. This supports NVIDIA's NVENC encoder for super fast export speeds. I'm also using a high bitrate preset and I can give my file a name and choose where I would like the file to be exported to. There's no audio, so I'm going to uncheck this box and then check a few other boxes just to make sure the output quality is as high as possible. Now scrolling down further, you'll see the encoding settings. Definitely go with hardware encoding if you can. And if you have a supported NVIDIA GPU, you're going to be able to take advantage of that super fast NVENC encoder, which in some cases can literally be twice as fast as using software encoding alone. So there's a few more settings that you can tinker with. And when you're happy, click OK. And if you have an NVIDIA card, just make sure you use CUDA as your renderer and then click play to start the export. And now that's done, I think it's time we take a look at the final animation. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So a huge thank you to Asus and NVIDIA for sponsoring this video and to you for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.